Thank you, Abraham. Thank you for the wonderful gift that you are in my life, and I'm going to read my question. Abraham, you have talked about how previous generations launched desires, but that few allowed themselves to receive the benefits because they were stuck in vibrational patterning. As a result, the benefits happened in later generations. You have also said that this is the time of awakening where there is more vibrational alignment with desires. I'd like to ask how the thoughts of our direct ancestors affect each of us. For example, how is my life influenced by the desires of my grandmother with whom I share so many qualities? I have a friend who was born with dramatic physical anomalies, but has far outlived her medical diagnosis because of deliberate creation. Was being born with these illnesses somehow influenced by the energy of her direct ancestors? How are we influenced by the thoughts of previous generations? How do we recognize when we are being influenced that way? How can we pick only the positive influences? How can we outlive the strong desires, negative ones, that move forward from past generations? Well, there's a little bit of misunderstanding at the basis of your questions that we want to clear up first. When we talk about how this generation or those who are living now are benefiting from the contrast that those who lived before, we're talking about things like finding difficulty in life which causes the creation of electricity, finding not enough water in places that you want to live which causes a creation of aquifers or reservoirs or pipelines. In other words, we're talking about the consequence of living life in your human form and how when you know what you don't want, when you're struggling, how you are always asking for an improvement. You never ever stop asking for improvement, for something that would be better. It's the nature of your discerning, comparative, cognitive experience. So we don't want to give you the impression that there is huge influence from those ancestors. Read through your questions one at a time. At the end. R yes. How are we influenced by the thoughts of previous generations? You are... The previous generations put things in vibrational escrow, which was the basis from which you were born into. So you were born with the knowing of all of the answers to all of the questions and solutions to all of the problems that they lived. Now how soon you allow yourselves to discover them has to do with how much you stay in the attitude of alignment. In other words, millions of people can struggle and ask for something and one who is focused and tuned in receives an inspiration for the solution. Mm -hmm. So that's the way it works. You all have the potential of getting so in tune with who you are that you're solutions come even before the problem appears. Jerry and Esther have had several experiences with their bosses that are really worth noting. They were coming from Texas on their way out to California. And the first leg, it is usually a three-day journey, the first night they usually try to get to Mesilla. There's a wonderful place they like to stay there and a wonderful restaurant. And so even though it's a long drive, they get up early so that they can be there. So they're moving out across the Texas desert. It is a beautiful landscape and a very nice road, very little traffic, one of their favorites. And Jerry said to Esther, what do you think about stopping early today? And Esther said, that feels like a really good idea. Now, his thought and Esther's agreement were completely contrary to what their former decision was. But both of them, in this open space of blissfully moving across the landscape, they were both tuned in, tapped in, turned on, and that idea occurred to Jerry, and Esther agreed completely. So they stopped nearly three hours earlier than they ordinarily would have at a campground that they remembered taking a wonderful walk when it had just rained and the fragrance of the desert after the rain was really what was calling them even though this day there was no rain in the sky. So they pulled into this beautiful campground and had a wonderful dinner at a little local place and a wonderful evening there. And in the morning, early, they Esther turned over the big diesel engine and it 
made the most awful loud sound they have ever heard from any engine. And so they immediately turned it off. They did not move the bus. They called the maker of the machine, who referred them to Prevo, who is in Canada, who told them that they would have to find someone locally to look at it. And fortunately, there was a backyard mechanic in their backyard. <laughs> he was a half a block away. And Raoul came and looked at the engine and discovered that a little belt pulley had frozen up and it was not turning, and as the belts were screeching over it, it was making smoke and sound. So they called for a replacement and were told that it would take until Tuesday, this was a Thursday, for the part to arrive. And Raoul said, I think I can fix this, and he took it to his shop and took it apart and couldn't. The, everything had frozen up inside of it. And he said, I have a friend who has a parts place in El Paso. He said, it will take me two hours to get there and two hours to come back. I'll go get the part. And Esther looked at his truck and thought, we will never see you again. <laughs> and he saw Esther and he said, I'll take Mama's truck. <laughs> and he was gone barely more than four hours, came back, had the part, put it on, and off they went. And when the part finally caught up with them, Prevo had sent the wrong part. So... Raoul had saved the day. Now here's the reason we tell you this story. It was obvious to all of us what was about to happen with the engine. Mechanical things break down. The timing of them can be influenced to a certain extent. And so the impulse to stop there was because Raoul was there. You see. So the solution to their problem came before they were even aware that they had a problem. Now, because they were tuned in, tapped in, turned on, they received the impulse. So life just unfolds in that lovely way. So recently, they are leaving Buffalo, New York. In the first two buses, Jerry checked the air pressure every morning that they drove. But the air pressure was never down ever, even one time. So over time, he has gained confidence that the tires are holding their pressure. They're very large tires, and a lot of them. So he had stopped checking the air pressure. So they wake up in Buffalo, and they're about to drive to Colorado. And Jerry said, I think I'll check the air pressure in the tires. So he does, and several of them are very low. And then they discover his gauge is faulty. It had not been used for so long. So then they get an adequate gauge, and then they realize that one of the tires, the tag axle, was very low. So they drove a very short distance to a truck place and had the bus washed and all of the tires aired up. And then they drove on to Colorado. And while the bus was sitting on its space, high in the mountains in Estes Park, Colorado, that tire went completely flat. So flat while they were away that it even came off the rim. So again, what the reason we're telling you the story is the air pressure was being lost in that tire. The repairman who came to fix it while it was sitting there found a nail in it. So that tire had a nail in it, and Jerry had an impulse for the first time in years to check the pressure. He took it and had it aired up, which was enough to get them to Colorado. And while they were sitting there, the tire had its breakdown, and they had their repair in the most comfortable of circumstances, not out on the roadway. Mm -hmm. So what we're getting at is when you are tuned in, tapped in, turned on, you receive these impulses that let you know you always have access to that bra. And that's the kind of influence that we want you to be aware of. Everything that you've lived and everything that you are has created this vibrational escrow of this perfect life experience. And when you allow yourself, by virtue of what you are choosing to think and therefore what you are conjuring in terms of the way you feel in your belly, when you achieve achieve consistent vibrational alignment with well-being, then the universe delivers to you in vibrational alignment with that. You do not have ancestors from the past 
who are trying to influence you apart from what's in your own vibrational escrow. You are the creator of your experience. You're not the regurgitator. There's not someone assigning things to you. What was next on your list? You may have answered all of that. How about <laughs> a friend born with physical anomalies? Well, you have to know that, and this is most significant, everyone, all this energy that's coming in has full awareness of what they're coming into. Now, often people say, oh, well, I'm certain we did not really know or we would not have been born in that place or to those parents or in that body or under those conditions. And we say, not only did you know it, but you wanted it or you would not have come forth. In other words, sometimes people say, well, did I choose that mother? Did I, did I, did I really choose that mother? <laughs> and we say, not in the way that from your physical form you think you're choosing. Physical humans, often, if you were choosing, you would choose what's easiest or what would be the most comfortable. But from your non-physical perspective, when you understand this whole cycle of things, you're choosing often the environment that would produce the most motion forward of your energy because yeah. you know that whatever stirs you up and makes the stream go fast is going to be potentially a much better life experience. It's not a fun life experience to have a fast moving stream that you're resistant of but it's really fun to have a fast moving stream that you're in vibrational alignment with so you got to remember that when you made these choices you knew about the stream and you wanted a fast stream and contrast was not seen as a bad thing but as a good thing also the thing that we most want to say about a situation like this where someone is born into a body that has anomalies or that is abnormal or in physical human terms is called deformed or inappropriate in some way. You have to remember that because the value of the contrast is seen as such value, you see it differently from your non-physical vantage point. But there's another very big thing, and that is many of the energies coming forth, when you call this the time of awakening, and that's why, consciousnesses coming forth are awakened and are as always, and our understanding that in the human experience, there are so many who are living very conditional love life. In other words, the majority of humans today are working to change a condition so that they can feel better. And so almost everyone that's born, especially into your Western culture, is born into an environment where there is a conformity that is running rampant. In other words, almost everyone is trying to get the new ones to conform. You want to go to this school and you want to think these thoughts and you want to behave in these ways and you want to study these disciplines and you want to get your degree in this area and you want to think these kinds of thoughts. And the energies coming forth understand so clearly that conformity is the opposite of expansion. That you want variety in order to uniquely express. And from the broader non-physical perspective, you see no danger whatsoever in being different enough that you get your stream moving because you know that you can turn and move with the stream. So anything that your life causes you to ask for, you have the ability to create. You understand this even in your physicalness. If you are a wonderful tennis player, which matches do you enjoy the most? The one where you can beat them every time or the one where someone evokes from you a better game than you've ever played? And that's the way you feel coming into these experiences, into these physical experiences. You're looking forward to the best game you've ever played. You're looking forward to the inspiration that calls you into the new place, you see. You're creators and you're expansive. And when you are stagnant, you can't bear it. And when you are moving, you adore it. And when you are moving deliberately, you really adore it, you see. Did we get there for everything or is there something left undone? So what I'm understanding then is that the effect of 
previous generations is more a universal thing where we have access to it as opposed to a direct influence. Oh, from it's previous. very specific in that. So today, your generation, you're living with terrorism, which is making you ask for a cooperative world. You're living an isolated world where you're factioned against what, one another in such powerful ways and evoking such fear in the bellies of so many. And in that contrast, you are wanting a more global community. You're wanting a more widespread understanding. You're wanting a respect for all civilizations. In other words, there are all kinds of things that are being born out of what you're living today.